Make it quick and then I'm through. Does that mean you're sad I'm gonna be through? Oh. I'm sad to be through too. But let me introduce my mother. This is my mother, Clemmy Barnes Hatchet. Who retired from Atlanta Public School System. She taught there most of her life. She married my dad. She was in South Carolina teaching and then she married my dad and moved to Atlanta and spent how many years in APS mom? Forty-three. Forty-three years working in the Atlanta public school system. So at APS, because I'm a graduate, Harper High School, and APS have a special place in my heart. So mom, thank you so much for being here and just thank you for what you are and mean to me. I love you so much. Now she was rough though. Clemmy Barnes Hatchet did not play. She, her, when she retired, she was assistant principal at Archer High School. And I was a little worried, frankly, about her being over there, but honey, Clemmy did not play. Woo, mercy. Anyway, she's a, she was born, she was born to teach. She really was born to teach. And then she became an administrator. All right, my last story, and then we're gonna be finished. Um, Madam Superintendent, it is, um, probably inappropriate for me to tell a story that says that I hated school. But there's a purpose to this story. I was in the first grade at Anderson Park Elementary School. This is my neighborhood. I grew up, I grew up in this area. I didn't go to Doug. I went to Harvard, as I said, but my two younger brothers went to Douglas. Anymore, but Anderson Park was the elementary school right over in Dixie Hill, which is where we lived when we were when we were younger. And that's where I went to the elementary school. And Miss O'Neill was my first grade teacher, Dr. Glover. And first grade, I was I hated school. I hated school, Mr. Mayor, because I was bored to death. I had learned to read before I went to school. My mother was a teacher, my dad was an avid reader, so I knew big words. So this C, Dick, Jane, Jump, Run, Spot stuff was getting on my last nerve. Because when I was first grade, it was C, Dick, Run, C, Spot, Run, C, Dick, Jump, Stop, Jump, Spot. It was a snooze. I hated it. I hated it. Plus, I was little. And I had this desk that was old and wobbly. So I would sit there, my legs couldn't hit the floor, and I would sit there, you know, wobbling back and forth. And Miss O'Neill would say, Glenda, stop fidgeting, be still, be still, be still. And I'm thinking, I'm trying. <laughs> now, kindergarten was cool, Miss Lara, because, you know, it was cookies and punch, and, you know, did hula hoop and then all, you know, pokey pokey, and it was cool. I had fun all day. And we're only there half day. So it was very social, as you might imagine, I was a very social child. So I mean, you know, I'm cool with kindergarten, but first grade, I was bored out of my mind. Because I knew big words. And Miss O'Neill kept saying, well, class, we're gonna get books, we're gonna get books, we're gonna get books, and we never got books. So finally, we get books, and we get to read out loud. So I'm thinking, Mr. Principal, this is, this is, uh, you know, this is my time. This is my time to shine, I'm gonna get to read. So when she gets to me, The page is torn out of my book. The page is gone. And Miss O'Neill skips over me. And she goes to the next kid. Now that may not seem like a big deal, but if you're six years old and you've been waiting and waiting and waiting for your turn to read out loud out of the book, it's a big deal. So I go up after class and she's getting ready to dismiss everybody to go home and I said, Miss O'Neill, I need a new book, please. And she says, Glenda, nobody has a new book. Now, you know, my love for community came a lot later in life. Now, Reverend Lowry, I would advocate and be lobbying 
demonstrating, picketing, and marching for everybody to get a book. But right then, I didn't care. I just needed a book. I, just, I was just looking for me. I just needed a book. So she finally said, after she realized I wasn't going to leave, she said, Glenda, colored children don't get new books. Now, this is after the Supreme Court decision. But somehow, that whole equal but separate business hadn't made its way down to my school right around the corner. And I didn't understand that. This is the reality. The colored janitors from the colored schools would go to the loading dock. This is a true story. And they would get the books that had been thrown out in the trash by the white schools. And then the teachers would put together a book, a cover from one, some pages from another. They taped them together as best they could. And so Miss O'Neill was doing the best she could. I just didn't understand that at six. My dad worked at night so that he could care for us, my, me and my younger brother, until my mother got home from, from school and then he'd take a nap and he'd go to work. So my dad was home and my dad was my hero. He still is, even though he's passed away. My dad was my hero, so I figured he could fix anything at six years old. I'd just go home and tell my dad. So I ran home, because my daddy could fix anything, and I ran home as fast as I could, and I said, Daddy, 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 you got to go back up to the school before Miss O'Neill leaves, because I need a new book. Daddy, Miss O'Neill says that colored children don't get new books. This is what I want every young person in this room to hear me tell you today. And then I'm going to be finished. I'm going to tell you what my daddy told me that day. He said, Glenda, go into your room and get your crayons. And I had a little red table with two red chairs. He said, I want you to get your crayons out. And I want you to write your own story. See, I didn't get it at six. Oh, but baby, oh, I got it now. My daddy knew that in his wisdom that he and my mother couldn't fix a situation where colored children didn't get new books, but he knew that he and my mother could fix me. And so he didn't let me linger at the pity party. He told me to go on and write my own story. And so to the class of 2011 today, I've come to tell you on the occasion of the Dr. Joseph E. Lowry lecture series on civil engagement, you are called on. I dare you to go and be bold and write your own story. Judge Hatchett, 
you are a shining example that we can become anything we want to be if we put our mind to it and remain focused. Fellow students, please take Judge Hatchett's message seriously.